So the module uh, is being delivered both to the software systems development year four and software systems practice. By the way, I should have said at the very beginning, a special welcome to all the Nanjing students. I know you've been here now for perhaps about two weeks or more. So uh, welcome and I hope you settled in okay. And we get to know you as the semester progresses. Now, um, so if uh, this is kind of catch 22, but if you can't see uh, this module on Moodle and you do have a Moodle account, this is a way of enrolling yourself on the actual module. Um, the only part that's significant really is this little bit at the end. This part of the URL is standard. This is the significant bit at the end that identifies this module. If you literally enter that URL directly into a browser, you'd be asked for an enrollment key. And that's the enrollment key for this year. So as I say, if you can't see my module um, on Moodle, th that's a way of enrolling, you, enrolling yourself. Alternatively, you can email me, but try this route first. And if that doesn't work, then email me and I will enroll you. In terms of the hours breakdown, there is one lecture per week and three practicals or labs per week. And the fact that there are three practicals really is an, uh, an indication as to the nature of this module, which is that it's very heavily kind of practical based, uh, as we'll see when I talk about the actual content. Uh, so this is kind of what I want to roughly run through in this uh, set of slides, tell you what software you need to install. Although if you received the email yesterday from the web app development two module, I really listed there the tools uh, that you need to install on your machine. You see a lot of the tools that you will be using for web app development two will also be used in Agile software practice. So there's a strong link between the two modules, which is good. You don't have too many um, different kind of tools to go working with. The next thing I wanna talk about briefly, I don't want to uh, drag on too much is the software development life cycle. And really the only reason I'm covering this kind of odd topic in an introduction is to Kind of explain where the title for this module actually comes from, uh, the Agile Software Practice module. So essentially uh, there are two kind of approaches towards uh, developing software and my guess is that you already know this, there are two kind of processes or development life cycles that you can follow. One is called the waterfall model which you may have heard about back in first year, I'd say. The other uh, I'm kind of loosely referring to as the agile model. And the agile model is there, I'm saying it's just kind of an umbrella name for a whole different uh, suite of alternative names. One being Scrum, Kanban is another one, and there are other ones as well. But we would just refer to it as the agile mod uh, model of the agile life cycle when developing software. Waterfall is obviously, as you probably know, the original model that was being used for many, many decades, really. But Agile, uh, okay, it's been around for probably 15 years now at this stage, although it, originally it wasn't being adopted very well, but it's being adopted an awful lot now by software houses. And arguably the Agile model is the correct model to be using for software development. The waterfall model really has fallen away uh, in popularity. Uh, again, just for the sake of completeness, this is your standard waterfall model describing the process that a software development team goes through uh, when they are developing a software application or package. And it's kind of the characteristics are, obviously you need to do your requirements analysis before you start doing developing anything. You need to know what you are developing and for whom and what kind of requirements it has. From there, you go into a whole design process. 
And it's not until your design process is completed that you should start doing your implementation or your coding. This was the belief back in the decades ago, uh, a number of decades ago. Uh, and after you've done all your implementation, then you should do your testing. So the really important point is kind of here at, in terms of the whole waterfall mindset, the idea that don't start any coding until you are absolutely certain about the design of the overall application, both high level design and low level design. And the other characteristic is you do your testing after you've done all your implementation. They're the main characteristics. And it turns out that those two characteristics turns out to be the downfall of waterfall really and the disadvantages with waterfall. And you do your deployment uh, at the very end. But this idea of don't start this until you've got this done, don't start implementation until you've got this done. So it's a very linear approach. Agile, on the other hand, um, I, I, I looked around the web for a nice diagram. To be honest, I couldn't find a, a really nice one. This is the only one that I just said I may as well take it, even though it's quite, kind of detailed. Uh, it does tell the true picture, but it's quite involved. And I wouldn't get overly uh, hung up now on, on, on this picture, but um, just to explain it anyway, and just switch to the pen. Uh, and really, this is the starting point here. All, all we're saying over here is that a software house may have a number of projects that they want to embark on and they pick one of them. And so from there, what we're kind of saying here is that you still have to do your requirements analysis at the very beginning. And so this is Maria representing all of the requirements that the software team have identified for this particular application following consultation with their clients. Uh, or whatever uh, approach they take. And from there then, uh, what you do is you take the high priority, highest priority requirement or subset of requirements, and you go through this whole phase here. And what's happening inside here is you are going through in an iterative way, in a repeating kind of way, a design, implementation, and testing. You're doing design, implementation of testing but just of the top level requirement uh, from the whole list of requirements. And you're actually delivering that to your customer and you're demonstrating it to them. And of course, that means now that the customer has something tangible that they can uh, give feedback on. You see the problem with the waterfall approach is that the time gap between requirements analysis and actually delivery of the end product could be, could be years, could be months, depending on the scale of the application. But either way, there's too long a gap between requirements analysis and delivery of software. Whereas here with the waterfall model, we're actually delivering something, albeit a skeleton version of the application, but it's contained the very first release, if you like, would contain some of the highest priority requirements uh, that the customer has of the application. You're delivering that or demonstrating to it, demonstrating it to them. Now, whether that's usable by the customer at this early stage is debatable, but at least they have something that they can provide feedback on. And you can see the feedback here can feed back into maybe modifying or adjusting the other requirements that you identified initially. Uh, Either way, you, you then take the next highest priority requirement or subset of requirements, and you go through a design implementation testing cycle for those. Uh, now, of course, you're taking the, the second batch of requirements and you're adding it to the product that you've already uh, developed. So you're, you're building your product up uh, you now deliver that and show that to the client and on and on it goes really until you eventually kind of uh, deplete all of this full set of requirements. So what's happening is we are doing deep design implementation and testing of small units uh, repeatedly. So there's testing going on from very early on 
and there's demonstration of the application to your client from very early on in the whole application development uh, process. That's what characterizes agile as opposed to uh, the waterfall model. And so obviously it's a very dynamic kind of uh, software development life cycle. The, 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 code, the code is changing constantly. Uh, you're doing an awful lot of testing. So that whole process needs to be managed very carefully. Otherwise it could be, uh, it could be chaotic really. And in addition, maybe this whole development is being carried out by a software development team that are distributed across, across the globe. So how do you manage the code base in that kind of situation? Do you have one physical copy of the code base and everybody adds to that? Uh, that may not really scale very well. So there are loads of potential pitfalls to the agile approach. Uh, but if we have really good tool support, then it can be successful. And that is really what has happened over the last decade or two, that the tools supporting the agile approach uh, have emerged. And really that's what I want to cover in this module, that whole tool chain as it's called. So uh, this is just another diagram of say, telling the same story really. Uh, this is specifically related to the Scrum uh, instantiation of the agile approach. But if you kind of compare that to the previous one, they're telling me the same story really. Uh, I just included it for, for completeness. So I don't need to talk my way through that. I'm gonna pause now for a second actually, just in case anybody has any questions either related to this or something that I haven't mentioned at the very beginning of the module. People may not have questions, but if you have, uh, feel free to to, uh, to comment. No? Okay, uh, that's fine. So uh, that's a, a very uh, high level uh, explanation of what I mean by the software development life cycle. Now, where does that relate to this particular module? And I've kind of already alluded to it really. What this module is all about is focusing on the tools that are essential for an agile development life cycle, because an agile development life cycle is a very dynamic environment. And we need ways of controlling essentially the code base um, uh, for your application. And I'm listing here uh, the different tools uh, that I would like to cover in this module. So the very first one there is uh, testing. Testing is absolutely critical. Testing is always important, whether you're using waterfall or agile, but it's even more important arguably if you're using an agile approach, because as I mentioned earlier, uh, your code base is very is, is changing kind of constantly. And you need to make sure that any code that is already working is still working after you've made some additional, uh, added some additional code to your code base or potentially changed uh, code that is already working. Maybe you would change it because you want to improve the design of the code, uh, but you need to ensure that everything that was working is still working. And the only way you can guarantee that is by testing. We can't do manual testing. It is just too, uh, too time consuming, too error prone, too laborious. We need to be able to automate the running of tests. And we will spend quite a lot of time actually looking at uh, test automation. The second one is source control there. Uh, again, I said that the code base is, is constantly changing from very early on in the software development life cycle. Uh, potentially you have lots of people not only contributing code, but modifying it or extending existing code. And we need to be able to track who has changed what in the code base. So a source control tool will uh, help us with that. 
I'll talk about system building tools then. Uh, system building is really, uh, if you think of maybe a Java based application, you've got to uh, recompile your Java code every time you want to build the entire application. Again, you don't want to be typing commands from the command line. You'd like some sort of automation of the system building process. So we look at that. Continuous integration, that becomes really important if you are part of a software development team and potentially that team is distributed across the globe, uh, but not necessarily, even if you're working on a software development team or within one premises. Again, because you've got everybody contributing code to the code base, we have to continuously integrate people's code into the overall code base uh, and do that on a very regular basis, as in multiple times in the day, really, rather than once a week or uh, uh, at the end of every month. It has to be done uh, continuously. So we'd like that to be automated and the kind of tools that do that first are continuous integration tools. Deployment as well is something that we'd like to have automated rather than having you know, a person in the team responsible for deploying the application to the cloud or wherever. Uh, we'd like it to be automated in some way. So hopefully I'm gonna get through that list of features of the Agile model and in particular the tools that support uh, the list of uh, requirements that I've listed there. At the bottom of the slide I'm saying that this module is very closely aligned with the Web App Development 2 module. Essentially in the Web App Development 2 module you will be developing an application, in this case it will be a web-based application. In the Agile module we will be focused on the tools that will support that development. Now, I'm involved in both modules this year. I hadn't been in previous years, but I was still uh, working with the other lecturer that was doing the web app development too. Uh, so hopefully that will run smoothly actually. The very last point in the slide there is, and I kind of mentioned this at the outset, although not all of you uh, were able to get into the meeting at the, at the very beginning. JavaScript is going to be the predominant language for this module and the web app development too. Uh, so we need to be have a very solid foundation in that. And I will cover JavaScript in the web app development too module actually. Uh, so the very first lecture today, I hope to start uh, digging into JavaScript um, to get us up and running. Although, as I said, I'm sure a lot of people already are reasonably familiar, if not very familiar with JavaScript. People always want to know about assessment uh, for obvious reasons. This is the assessment breakdown uh, that I'm proposing for this module. It's actually going to be kind of similar for the Web App Development 2 module, uh, but I'll talk about that module uh, on another meeting. So there's 20%, it's 100% CA, 20% of that will be for the labs that you do and you will be submitting your labs on a fairly regular basis. And then the remaining 80% uh, will be two kind of assignments or projects uh, that you will work on. And as I'm saying there, there's a similar breakdown for web app development too, and the two projects that you do for web app development too, uh, the kind of timing of them will be linked to the timing of the two projects on this module. There isn't much point in me going into too much detail on that at this early stage, I think really, uh, because it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense until we get well into the module. For, for now, I guess, um, probably maybe the important thing is to just be aware of this here, that the labs, even though you might think 20% isn't a whole lot, uh, you'd be surprised that it, uh, how it can affect your overall grade at the end. Now the lab works that you'll be submitting, they, that won't really start until um, maybe next week, uh, definitely by week three, but uh, it won't be this week, but 